Mm-hmm. So when I we, he took me to a um a theater, it was in Decatur, and they had the old style seats where the um the, the arms did not raise. Right. right. So here I am trying to be a troop trooper, and at the same time, I have all this anxiety because I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, a minute. I, I I can't sit in this seat. So he was like, right. sit on my lap. So I was like, okay. sit on your lap. So right. here I am, half half of my butt cheek in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> the, cr- the crack of my butt on the arm Ooh. and the other ass and, on his and him with a woody okay. <laughs> it was so traumatizing and embarrassing right. yeah. to the point yeah. I said you know what that's when I started getting conscious of like mm-hmm. you know different places where to go how the seating mm-hmm. is how I'm going to get in how I'm going to get out and it, it's, it's sometimes it's nerve wracking yeah. Because I just want to go to a place where I can just sit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have to think about that, but I have to think about that in order for me to be comfortable because I don't want to be embarrassed like that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've squoze into a seat one time. It was at a concert. With, it was with my family. And we had gotten tickets to, I don't even know, it might have been Alicia Keys. I, no, you know who it was? It was a Tyler Perry play. It wasn't even a concert. Oh. But it was in a theater. Okay. And of course, those seats are what they are. So there's wooden seats. Right. I squoze all this in that seat, honey. I needed some WD 40 to get out of. <laughs> I, I still don't know how I got out the seat. But you know, embarrassment will give you some fuel. So I remember kind of yeah. jumping up and, you know, like, oh, I got out. You know, they don't see me. I got home, I think for the next two weeks, my leg was blue, purple, red. I don't know mm-hmm. if the veins ever recovered in there. I'm talking about the worst bruise. You would have thought somebody had kicked me literally while I was there. It was yeah. horrible and painful. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, no, I'm not doing that again. And so then I started asking about the seats. Like some, some theaters have those, like the Apollo seats that are at the top. Mm-hmm. And people were just sitting in regular chairs. And we have a theater in Chicago that's like that. And I called and said, hey, how do you get those VIP seats? How much do those cost? And they said, well, we don't really win them. And I said, well, listen, this is what happened the last time. And I remember having pictures and the guy said, oh my God, let me just mm-hmm. ask and let me see what we can do. And so I would call, he said, you can you can get them, you, you know, whenever you need them, you can just rent those, you know, uh, purchase those seats. And then they finally just started putting it on the thing, but I had mm-hmm. a, uh, putting it on, you know, the ticket sales. So I would be able to get them. And I've done that in mm-hmm. other theaters, but they're like, like you said, places that we just can't go because of that kind of embarrassment. Mm-hmm. I when right. I I decided, well, a couple of my friends were wanting to go to see the color purple with Fantasia mm-hmm. when it was out here in mm-hmm. Cali. And I um I my first response was I'm not gonna be able to go because I can't fit in the seats. And one of the one of my friends said, Mikhail you remember that they have a disabled seating section. And I'm thinking to myself like, oh, honey, they're going to bring me them folding chairs. I cannot. So Uh I said, you know what? Let me just call them. So what ended up happening was I called. I spoke directly to, I asked for the management. I spoke to them and I told them I was very explicit. I said, I mean, I'm I'm a plus size woman. I cannot fit in uh, the the folding chair seats and I definitely cannot sit on a folding chair. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you have ballroom chairs anywhere in your facility? Then they said, oh yes, ma'am, we do. And, and, and it turned out that me, and I sat by myself, I was sitting, I had actually the seat that I would have had was about five rows back. When they set me in the disabled seating section, I was up higher and I was off, like, so I had a great view and I was loving sitting on so nowhere by myself. <laughs> I felt like mm-hmm. I was VIP and I was in a ballroom chair. Actually, I had two and I was seated comfortably mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that play. And with that, one of the, that's just another, what I would encourage any woman out there to do, whether you're a man or a woman, to, to, if you want to go somewhere, call ahead and find out about their accessibility. Mm-hmm. Ask the questions. I mean, look at it like this. They haven't even seen you. 
if you're concerned about someone, see if you're going through that part and, you know, because that's, that's a whole different, that's like another discussion. But if you're ready to get out there, are you not knowing or you're questioning it? You can call ahead and you can ask questions. They, they, there are people, somebody will understand at least enough to know that they want to accommodate you. Most places you go there, they really need or have to accommodate you, especially if it's a disability. But a lot of people don't are even looking at this as a disability, you know, and whether, however you're how, in, for me, I'm not, you know, in lieu of what happened to me last year, I feel now I have a disability, you know, physically, but I didn't even look at my size as a disability. And I don't think I right. will, but right. at the end of the day, in order sometimes to get that across to people, when I'm speaking to them, I have to say, you know, I have a disability or I'm, you know, or, or I'll go ahead and say I'm a woman of size. Right. Uh, and, and sometimes that, cause they, in their mind, they could be imagining someone 250 pounds. You know, I have to be explicit and tell them, listen, yeah. you know, but you, but there is a certain confidence that does come with that. I understand it. But looking at Google, looking at those images, getting an idea of the accessibility of the place, how far you have to walk from the front door. I ask questions like how far do, is it from the parking lot to the front door? Mm -hmm. I ask those kind of questions <laughs> and I, and I will have to, to do so. And, huh? and just, just to piggyback on what you said. I know that there's somebody that's watching that's going to be upset or just, you know, disappointed when you say that I sat in a disability section. And mm -hmm. because, again, it, it's, it's sort of stigmatizing. So mm -hmm. we can't, you know, sit with everybody. Everybody's got to be the same argument with people who are disabled to say, mm -hmm. why do we have to have a section? Why can't there be a space where we're all, you know, inclusive and being able mm -hmm. to sit together? We've got to get right. to that place in society. And it's it's a good it's a fair argument. It's the it's the world we all want to live in, but we've got mm -hmm. to get there. And there was a time mm -hmm. that there wasn't a disability section. There wasn't That's disability right. access and there had to be a fight and a movement yes. for that. And so the right. movement has to, you know, take place. And so we've got to get there. And so I would say to those people, because I understand it, is that find the the venue that works for you. It's not just mm -hmm. one theater or one concert right. or one, you know, venue. Find the one that you feel most comfortable in, but don't just think that there is nothing that's going to work. And so you just right. sit out because right. you deserve to be enjoying life. Everybody mm -hmm. deserves to be enjoying it because otherwise, what is it worth? You know, what is it all for if we're not right. living? Because we, we, at that point, we just existed. If you're just sitting yeah. at home, you just existed. That, that's not a quality of life. And if mm -hmm. you're sitting out because it's painful, you know, your knees are going to hurt. So you're going to be at pain at home. They'll at least be at pain and have a concert. Enjoy, you know, right. your favorite artist. Get some spoken word. Have an experience because the pain, if it's uh, terminal, is still going to be there. You're going to still right. be in pain. We, we have ways to be able to reduce the pain. We have ways that we know how to deal with it. And sometimes after we go, you've been paying for the next day, but you say, boy, I sure have fun. Let me tell you what we did. That's what life is all about. So we just got to get out there and live it. And and I'm going to add in there. Go ahead, honey. Oh, before I go out, what I do is I put biofreeze on my knees. Yes, ma'am. It's going to involve me doing a lot of walking or yep. something like that. Because I know it's going to, you know, be some pain. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just to piggyback what you said, um, change. I mean, we don't really have a lot of representation in the media. So we don't see a lot of plus size women or large SSBBW women getting out. We don't see a lot of reality shows of us getting out, having right. fun, enjoying life, right. you yeah. know, or whatnot. Um, so they don't really, you know, see that. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. No, you're right. You, you're absolutely right. And I, I read something. I think it's probably just a hashtag, but it says fat visibility is fat, fat activism. It's us being seen. Mm -hmm. We got to be out there and be yeah. visible so that they see us, right. so that they say that, you know, these you know, my customers, when they're looking at us, I got to get my customers right. so I get all of them because now it's some more big people yeah. coming in. I was in a, a Lane Bryant. No, was it Lane Bryant? I think it was Ashley Stewart. It was Ashley Stewart. I know what it was. They had the um, 
what is that when they have that model search? The, that finding Ashley. Ashley or something like that? Yeah. So they had the finding oh, yeah. Ashley um, thing. And it was here in Atlanta in um, Camp Creek Marketplace. So it's all, at, you know, Ashley Stewart goes to size 36 now. Mm -hmm. 36 is a, is a nice size. Um, yeah. So you got to imagine that there's a spectrum of women. If you're coming from size 10 to 36, there right. is a spectrum that you're going to. So they had this model search and there are women of all sizes there. There are super-sized women. There are a couple of ultra-sized women there. And we were there to you know, see the women and cheer them on. And they were there. And I remembered just kind of paying attention and saying, because Ashley Sue were paying attention to their market. Because they yeah. got just the regular folding chairs. And you know they, they had maybe 50. And there was a, almost 150 people there. And so they said, you know, the first 50 can go and sit down. And I remember seeing these two big women that they were, it had to be my size. I'm looking at 500 pounds and I'm saying to myself, how are they going to work with these folding chairs? Mm -hmm. And the women were sitting there and we've got a way that we try to make it work. We mm -hmm. do. We'll put all of yes, our we weight do. on our feet, what? tear them calves yeah. up. They on fire trying to make sure yeah. that, that chair don't go down underneath us. And I'm yeah. watching them and, you know, a couple of other people said, they, they got the wrong chairs for this crap. And I'm right. saying, Lord, I'm watching these two. Lord, they both them. Finally, one of them hit a breaking point. And she said, "Come, you want to sit down? Come on. She gave a lady the seat. And the security guard said to her, he said, no, don't give up your seat because then you won't have no place to sit. And I said, she's going to be fine. She's going to be fine. Yeah. She, okay. them legs, them calves just gave out. Like, she knows yeah. that this is not going to help her. So she has, and I'm saying to myself, when are they going to realize what, you know, who they're working with? So yeah. when I saw somebody who looked like a big wig, she had a tag on, I, I, I introduced myself and I said to her, um, do you guys have a committee when you're doing this that has representation from each of your size ranges? And she said, mm -hmm. honestly, I don't think so. And I said, that's what you need because these chairs are not for your size 36 women. These chairs mm -hmm. really stopped before you got to the size 24 away. You're right. And so <laughs> you got to think about that. And I said, and you got the store open. It's a million people. You got the aisles this close. And they went and moved some of the, you know, the aisles and things around the clothing to give more room. But I said, somebody's got to be saying these things. Somebody's yeah. got to be out there. Yeah. You know, um, Torrid had a, a sale the other day. And they said, in-store or whatever, and you can get this amount, oh, this in store only. And I said, well, that disenfranchises us because we can't get size sixes in the store. They're not mm -hmm. trying to get size sixes. They, you know, mm -hmm. after four, you got to get it online. So if the sale is only in the store, then that means that a percentage of us can't ever shop it. And right. Like, well, we, didn't, we didn't intend for it to be like that, but that's what it is. Right. And do I understand that we're not in the malls like other people? I do, but we got to get back out there. We got to be in the malls. We got so that you know to say, cater to me. I'm shopping. I want to be out there. Does the mall have some logistics? Yeah, it does. It's got a lot of logistical issues, but can we do it? Yeah, absolutely. That's, yeah. that's As we're out, like you said, it, 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 it's our responsibility. To, I know you don't want, nobody really wants it, but it's our responsibility if we want to see the change. We have to speak up when you are in a, a place. It's not being nasty and like, you need to be able to take, accommodate me because it's not their responsibility, but it's if you want my dollar, if you right. like to have money in your store, right. I need to, to be mindful of my presence. And that's, I, I, was, I remember when, uh, I think I was sharing with this issue before, Unique, when uh, Simply Fashion first came out mm -hmm. and they, they had took, I, I was in there with a friend of mine I didn't even know they had a, a size, a super plus size. Mm -hmm. And around it, I saw the little thing that said super plus. And I was like, what's this over here? Right. So I was very, this was the first start, I guess, carrying it on a, maybe a yeah. tribe. Yeah. Grounders were all squished and close together in a little corner. And I'm like, well, I want to see one of us, the round is way over there. I can't right. get over there because if I'm aware, if I wear a 4X, how do you think I'm going to get through this right. little man? <laughs> To the manager said, hey, ma'am, you're selling my size. I see you got five X's in here, right. but a five X person, no way they're going to get that rounder. You right. got to put 
corner behind two other, you know, two or three. Ones. And she said, I never thought about that. And she was a plus size woman. Mm. She was tall, like I call them, I call them mm-hmm. little fat. Little thing. Right. <laughs> and she was taller plus size, but it, I thought when I, she, and, and she, she didn't do it right then, of course, but the next time I came in, she said, she pointed to it like a smile and I said, I see, okay. girl, you know, <laughs> so it's, you know, we have to speak yeah. up in a respectful manner. And even if it's not the manager, if you're not getting the results that you see when you, I have not, I have not had a problem when I talk to managers in different stores. Mm-hmm. I've been in cabinets before and it's, I noticed they had to start putting the benches in there, you know, mm-hmm. bench seat mm-hmm. chairs. And so, and that, and that affects my dollar because I'm going to go to those places. Exactly. I'm going to yeah. go to more for me to sit that the, 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 the uh, dressing room area has a bench seat in it mm-hmm. i'm that's why i'm going to shop i'm going to frequent there more yeah. so like i said we have to express our our you know our power with our dollar and and then have to let people know why i don't shop at your store because you don't mm-hmm. have this and, and so once you let a manager know and if they say well it's, I, don't, I can't control this what's the corporate number right right and it's dollars and cents more than you i know you might not yeah. be in a position of power don't waste your time complaining to a salesperson. Talk to somebody in power. Talk, yeah. you know, call yeah. general this. management, mm-hmm. general managers, mm-hmm. uh, exactly. writing, you know, some, if you're not the type of person that is, uh, you know, that does it, maybe you're not someone who's uh, wanting or feeling confident enough to mm-hmm. communicate verbally. Writing is wonderful. You know, yeah. you can't, you, a lot of times they'll look at writing uh, first, mm-hmm. you know, written written experience and you talk about the desires and the things that you you know you want to see differently Mm -hmm. and and uh, there's a lot of them who will listen because they they want they're in business to make money if they're going to sell a product they want if they're going to sell a 6x then that means that someone who wears a 6x more than likely is going to be drawn to that well, mm-hmm. if you want the six X's to sell, then you there's something you there's some things that need to be done in order to get six X mm-hmm. size people to come in. Like when I think of a shopping, I think of you know, for for example, I'm on a scooter now. Mm-hmm. When I go somewhere, I'm gonna have to be on a scooter. If I'm gonna, I love to go shop. I'm, I'm an avid online shopper now because I have to be. Mm-hmm. But I want, I like to be out shopping Mm -hmm. getting in between even even uh some of the places when I used to was just on the cane just squeezing in between the racks or you know having to go so I know that experience Chitaka um but now it's like the scooter so if I come into a place you know I'm gonna and if I can't fit I'm gonna I have to start talking about that because you have people in wheelchairs Mm -hmm. you have people in scooters like Mm -hmm. we go I still love to dress no matter how long I have to stay on this scooter how long I got to roll out, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I love to dress, you know, <laughs> and, um, and be cute and be sexy and all those things, you know, oh. so we want to be able to come in and Absolutely. be comfortable shopping. You know, I remember when those benches in some of these places, I was like, thank you, Lord. Avenue got something I was like, thank you, mm-hmm. Lord. <laughs> and sometimes I would just go in the dress room, just sit down because I've been on my feet so long grabbing up all of my stuff I'm about to try on (laughs) so I gotta take a breather you know and and I guess you you said writing the letters I think that uh when we find situations that um especially a a a company that continually takes our dollars I think with anything whether it's race or whatever we have to get maybe make the numbers together a letter writing campaign you know if we find keep having the same offense with the company Mm -hmm. that's yeah, we want your dollar. We we want you. We want your dollar for whatever reason. You know, you we pay to you for that. We're not going to cater to your needs. So we yeah. have to. That's I think one of the things that with the, uh, groups like Juicy Peaches, uh, mm-hmm. that's something that I know you have been trying to get something together mm-hmm. to do that to to, to for a, a voice to uh, our community. Mm-hmm. And I you were, you seem you know I know you said well it seemed like three years is but you know I think it's grown a lot from where you started. So don't get discouraged. I know it's oh, late. I'm not discouraged. I'm committed. <laughs> I, I remain committed. So definitely not discouraged. I just want to see us doing to out being out more. And I remember when I started, I said that I just didn't want to be the biggest person out everywhere I go. And mm-hmm. it wasn't because, you know, I just was tired of, you know, being the biggest person. I just wanted everybody else to come out and enjoy it too. 
right. enjoy life with me. Um, I'm used to everybody looking and staring positive or negative. I'm used to yeah. that. So that wasn't bothering yeah. me. I just wonder why we are not all out and really enjoying life. And mm-hmm. I just wanted more of us. And I still want that. Um, and right. but I understand the logistics, but I think it extends to the medical community as well. Mm-hmm. Even something as simple as just getting your, your nails and, and, and feet done. I remember there was a time I was, I think we were going out with the peaches. It was me and some of the peaches and we were going out. And one of the peaches said, I had on sandals, you got your feet done. And I said, yeah. And I thought to myself, hey, they ain't gonna let me slip. I can't catch them. They ain't gonna watch, you know, they watching everything. They notice I got my feet done. I just got them done that day. And I said, I gotta be on it. I I can't, they watching me. And I remember maybe a couple months later that the same peach said in one of these conversations, I haven't had my feet done in 15 years. I can't find Mm. a salon that I can go to where I can fit and not in the chair. Right. And I thought to myself, that's why she said that. But she didn't say it to me. I mean, you know, I haven't been, she just was like, wow. And then I thought to myself, that's another one of those we're suffering in silence because I hadn't had mine done in seven years prior to getting it done that day. Mm -hmm. I found somebody that comes to your home and does it. So I didn't have to go to the chairs because when I, you know, every time I go in the chairs, I can't fit in the chairs because of the arms, it's the tight fit. Then I got to maneuver to try to get in there, you know, put my feet in this water with these big thighs. They eat some big tree trunk thighs. And some of (laughs) y'all just got some booty and stuff and them little legs. No, I don't. Tataka, you know my struggle, don't you? We, we got some tree trunks. These are some whole thighs all the way to the D. So I gotta try to get them in, put them in here. It was too painful. I ain't going through that kind of pain for my feet. I'm gonna just wear these closed toe shoes. Y'all won't know about it. And, and so and then when I found somebody who could and they came to your home, I was like, ah, oh, I'm finally getting it done to only find out that my sisters are struggling with the same thing. But we're suffering in mm-hmm. silence because we don't have these places that we can come and say, hey, where you get your feet done at? Because I need mine. Yeah. You know, where do you get this? I remember Shataka was on a television show when we met. And Shataka's shop is, is, is all get out. I'm talking about, you know, get so nice every time you see her. And then she said she'd been in the bed five years. I said, what? You know, she's been in the bed, got a nail done, a hat done every week. Wait a minute now. Give up the goods now. It's no way. And I just, you know, I want people to think about that. If you just let mm-hmm. that marinate, Shataka in the bed about five years and Shaba then again soon. She ain't gonna play with the people. We ain't supposed to play with the people either. You supposed to have right. everything you want, all of the luxuries. All of the everything, you just got to open your mouth. My grandmama said, closed mouth don't get fed. How do they, right. do I understand why we're not talking to everybody? Yes, because of the stigma. I right. do understand. But that's why we're here, to make sure that we can share those resources so we can put it out there and that everybody can have, because just having a pedicure just makes you feel real good. You know, yes. something just that simple, just it makes you feel real good. Those feet, it's, it's invigorating just to have those because we're women. We want and deserve to be pampered too. So mm-hmm. being able to share those resources is everything. But being mm-hmm. able to have those experiences and not have to, again, apologize, not have to feel you know embarrassed about saying it because you're saying it to others who understand because we definitely right. understand. But see, people have to share the resources. Some people like to keep <laughs> what they know to themselves. And that goes with a lot of things. Like, it's just, you, you, have, you have to be able to help one another, especially when you're supersized. Like, like I was looking at, um, did y'all see the show that just came out um, with Jamie Lopez? Ah, the barbershop, the, her barbershop. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the show yet. I'm Her excited beauty. for it. Congratulations, Jamie. Congratulations. Oh, watching. I'm so happy that you for your success. That's my girl, baby doll. Hey, hey, Jamie, girl. <laughs> yeah, like, so when I was thinking about that, so w- when Catherine's left, I don't think there's any other 
right. uh, clothing store that we can go in to try on anything. Like I remember I would go to um, this one store, Rainbow, and um, and every time, you know, everything is so closed in. So mm -hmm. when I'm walking through, I'm moving everything, shift everything, right. coming mm -hmm. behind me, trying to put everything back together. Right. I mean. We had to rebuild the store. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, but we, we have to like to share, like even with some of these smaller boutiques, I noticed like um, they selling 6X, 5X clothes, things like that. But people won't won't share the information. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm glad you said that, Priscilla, because like you said, we have to be willing to share, look out for each other, because like even going back to the, the, the nail thing, like there was, there's nobody, it took me a long time to cut run into somebody who had anywhere near, be, be, was anywhere near my size. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't in the nail shops. It wasn't, I had to go somewhere and come across someone like that, you know, mm -hmm. and I wasn't looking, but it, but I was just living my life. And I went to the, I would go to the nail shop. I, I'm, the, I'm a creature of habit when it comes to something like that. If I find something I like and they can take care of me, I stay with it. Mm -hmm. And I had, I, for three years, I was going to this one nail shop and I would, I learned how to bring my own chair. Let me share that with y'all too. Oh, I started this is, in my transparency. I, I had, there were two chairs that we had found, you know, people put stuff out on the curb and these, and they waiting for some, the people to come pick it up or just get it away. We, mm -hmm. I, we were dri driving down the street and there were two chairs and they looked great. Uh, and then, and what was attractive about them was they were some solid metal. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, when I go places and I can't fit or if I, you know, or, or in a chair, or I start thinking like, oh, I can use these chairs, you know? Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll get them real posted or whatever. So one of my girlfriends is up getting my chair wheel poster at it for that. I had it a while, but I would take that chair to the salon so much that whenever my kids or anybody was coming with me, they see that chair come and they start moving. They start moving. Mm -hmm. so that's how long I had been with them. Mm -hmm. When they went to a, when they went to refurbish the place, that's when they start acting funny with me. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, I was already accustomed to one person doing my feet. The person who did my nails, that they treated me nice. But I was like, okay, they acted brand new. I start feeling the vibe. The energy was changing. I was like, I don't want to go there anymore. Mm -hmm. So what I did was in my, in my desire not to give up something that I like to do, I put on Facebook, I literally asked for, for um, what is it called? Mobile? Not reservation. Huh? A mobile service? Um, yeah. I asked, did anybody know? And I had people tagging people, tagging people, tagging. One of my girlfriends tag this lady and she's been my nail tech ever since she's been with me over six years she's like family wow. now she yeah. came in she we talked over the phone and I told her I haven't had my feet done while she said girl I do people's feet who are bedridden and when she told me that mm -hmm. I said oh okay you could you definitely can make me comfortable mm -hmm. I've never changed no one but my sister has touched my feet when they came to a pedicure in years mm -hmm. and then my, even when I said, now I got to do is find me something who do nails at home. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm cool with getting my nails done at the side of my bed. I'm cool with getting my, you know, I even had mm -hmm. the one time I did my feet in the bed. I said, all right, as I can get with this, you know, mm -hmm. because there, it was just, I feel like, oh, I'm in an oasis. I don't have to, I, don't, right. I can be quiet. Getting right. my nails and my feet done or me wanting to be serene and quiet and just mm -hmm. chilling. And a lot of times you can't do that. You know, because of a lot of people around you talking. Yeah. So I just looked at, hey, I get them done at home. I'm good. I'm not going back to the nail shop. I'm fine. You know, right, so right. when it comes to sharing, I do share with people, you know, which is a good thing. If I find a dress and you ask me, I my designer, you know, mm -hmm. my girl KZ. Hi, KZ. <laughs> KZ <laughs> in the house. KZ in the house. Mm -hmm. I was like, listen. I got a designer. People ask where I get my clothes. I have a designer. If I can't find it and I want it, I, we get together and we talk about it and she right. comes up with something beautiful for me, yeah. you know? So I, I say that where there's a will, there's a way. And mm -hmm. to all my sisters out there, you don't have to sit home. That's why we have in this talk. The bottom line is we want to see you get out there. We want to see you live your best life. And Shataka has a story. Scylla has a story. Unique has a story. We have multiple experiences. 
here. I have stories. I'm telling y'all, I'll tell you some stories, but I'm telling you one of the desires I have is to get out here. That's why when I get on a plane, I take a picture. I take a picture of what it looks like in the sky because I want other plus size women to know you can travel too. I've had them get in my inbox. I'm telling you, once you start, Shatata, I'm sure you've had it. You need cool. I'm sure if you did, they, they've talked to you. Still, a, they, they, if they see you somewhere, where'd you get this at? How did you do that? You mean to tell me you fly, you travel? How do you do that? I love a good how you do that because mm -hmm. baby, I'm going to let you know how I did. Mm -hmm. you no, know? And invite you along. Come on, you know, because we want to see you out there. Let this please let this encourage you to one, join the Juicy Peaches <laughs> because you we're going to come into a family that's going to support you starting with unique. Number two, we want to see you out there in it. Even if you can't make it to every event, even if you can't make it to do everything, I could make it, but you know what I enjoyed? I enjoyed seeing my sisters out. Mm -hmm. That's motivating. That's encouraging. You know, right now I couldn't make it when they went, but to see the pictures and let me know, wow, yes, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to Jamaica again next year. Yes, I'm going to do it. Yes, y'all better sit aside that pool and mm -hmm. enjoy your drinks and enjoy the ambiance. Mm -hmm. We don't care about who doesn't accept us. It, it, people going to stare anyway. I am, I have 100 inch hips, y'all. Okay. Anywhere I go, scooter or not, they staring. Uh, that's not going to stop me from living my best life. And we must do that. We must get out there. Put on something cute, baby. If you wear makeup or need a tutorial, honey, some of us will let you know we can help you with that. If put, get yourself up. If you need some assistance, if you, honey, listen, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be real transparent right quick. I never knew I was going to need a Hoya lift to get me out of bed. Well, a fall last year changed that for me. I never knew that I was going to end up in a situation where I can't walk right now, but I got a scooter. So lift me on that scooter so I can squeeze my cheeks out the house, squeeze out that gate, and I'm going for it. I'm, I was on the beach the first time when my family got some ply boards. I shared that mm -hmm. because I wanted everybody to see that you can too, sis. You can too, bro. You can get, my family got, my brother and sister were adamant. I hadn't been, I hadn't had my feet on sand in years. But what was most important is they said, and I was willing to sit far off from them on the sidewalk just so I could be with my family. I knew they was going to come be around me. They said, no, we're going to get you out there with me, with us. And they did, mm -hmm. ply board, went and bought them and went little by little so I could scoot my scooter along and I was able to sit with my family on that scooter and enjoy the beauty of that beach. And I shared that because as, as that was not an easy thing for me to share. First mm -hmm. of all, ever even getting on a scooter for me. Because there was a time I went from being a big girl, not on a cane, then I had to be on a cane. Then I had to start getting on a scooter. I was, someone had to t talk to me about even being on a scooter, like you're missing, you're paying money to go on these trips and you're not seeing it all because you have a mobility issue. You can't get to everything. Get on a scooter, girl. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm going to share that with you. Get on a scooter, girl. Mm -hmm. Get on it. Don't worry about it. They're going to stare anyway. You roll through gardens. You look at the beach. Go out enjoy this world because we only get one to live i'm off my soapbox for two seconds but we only get one life to live mm -hmm. live your best life even if you got to roll up to it you know that's what that's what we want to encourage you with and unique i'm so glad we have these conversations that we're having this out loud like this because it even helps me to understand more why we have to talk about this stuff you know mm -hmm. i don't even i didn't want to share my hoya lift story or my what happened i'll share what happened but there's some stuff that has happened that i never thought i was gonna have to go through you mm -hmm. know but i have to go through this because i'm gonna have to say here i go i'm gonna have to say to some other woman since you can do it you know yeah. and it is very emotional for me you know, and I'm being honest and transparent because you go from one way and all of a sudden your life changes. But the, the my faith in God first has kept me, but he's keeping me because I have a voice in this world and our voices need to be heard. That's what this is all about. I have to be able to say 
sister, you don't have to lay there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sis, you know what? If they can get you on a gurney, if they can get you on a a, a scooter, you know, I, from every don't lay there, move your legs. You know what I'm saying? It's times I don't feel like getting up. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's times I don't feel mm -hmm. like getting up. But every day I make a conscious decision. I got to put my feet on this floor. But that's the strength of our mind. That's the strength we have to have. Because when this, so a lot of times this world's not going to be cool to us. But when you have a, a, a family environment such as that's willing to talk with you and share what we're going through, you're not alone. Yeah, you're not yeah. alone. And I, some of us think we really are, yeah. you know, until you start talking about your experiences. Right. And that's why I want whoever it is that hears the sound of our voices when this comes out to know that you're looking at women who all have all had struggles. And some stuff we still dealing with, but we getting up, yeah. we doing what we got to do and we're live, we're doing our best to live our best lives, you know? Absolutely. And so our voices have, our voices can be heard. So I hope you hear our voices today, you know, thank I you. sister. And, and also there's, there's power and strength in numbers. Yeah. So if you're, if you're feeling like you're depressed or you can't be around anybody um you're shy if you get around mm -hmm. a group of women who are like you yeah they'll you know we'll we'll bring it out of you somebody gonna do Definitely. something to bring something out of you you yeah. just have to get out and come you have to get yeah. out and and That's join fine. first of all join juicy peaches join and it. then start and start living yeah and, and i think and there's a scripture in the bible i don't know where it is um if you help me out sister um mm -hmm. michael um mm -hmm. it says um by beholding, we become change. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, like so us living our lives out loud, being yes. transparent with people about, you know, what's going on with the but still see not only the struggle side of it, but see the, the victorious side of it too. Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. it, I did it. And so it, 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 I think that encourages people, like I say, because they they get to behold it. They get to see it. They don't just hear, they don't just see this. A lot of times people see the finished work and you can tell them about what you did. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that was easy because it's just your story. But when they actually see you in the struggle process, yeah, and it, it encourages people in a different way. So yes. all of our sisters out here who are watching, uh, stopped and tuned in for whatever reason, whether you know somebody or whether you are a sister of size or, or a person, not just sisters, a person of size, and you mm -hmm. find yourself in situations, I think it's important that you connect with other people. Uh, and you're not alone and that you connect and see see somebody transforming in, in their life and making a difference in, in mm -hmm. giving and that, I think that makes a difference too actually seeing it that's why it's important that posting like hashtag living abundantly hashtag the uh you know them them just eat so that people will see uh, and get and, and it, it and those hashtags create a a collective too that it makes mm -hmm. it so when it's so if you want to know what's going on you can just put the hashtag and see all of our things all of the things yeah. really, all the transformation that's happening all the overcoming and and mm -hmm. in that too yes mm -hmm. absolutely i'm so glad that i had you guys here with me today it's always a pleasure it's always um, fun but i think for those who are watching it's important for them to see us you yeah. know Juicy Peaches by our smiles. We are always smiling. And that's right. what I hear people say all the time. Boy, you got the baddest peaches. Them peaches know they look good. <laughs> How you get all of the good looking ones? But what, everybody always smiling. And I hear that from women all the time. That, you know, I never seen this many big women out smiling and having yeah. fun. Society has let us believe that we're all sad. We're all at home and just depressed and not happy. That's not true. You can right. be happy. You can yeah. live life abundantly and enjoy life. And yes. we are going to put out a resource um, list. And we're going to put it on our website. That's, it'll be out shortly. Priscilla hit on something very important. Not everybody does share resources, but we do. And we're going to be sharing resources and we're going to invite you to share resources from across the country so that people in your area will know that there are venues that they can go to, that there are doctors that they can go to that are friendly and that are, you know, 
supportive and use science-based methods and not assumptive um, precautionary tales about our weight. Those things are important because we want you to everybody to be healthy, to live a healthy life, to live a, a fulfilling life, and to enjoy life. So we are going to be back. I'm glad that we were here. I hope that you stay with us the whole time. Um, and we'll be back and we'll have some more of our sisters and we'll have some more conversations. And we're going to be honest and we're going to be open. And as Mikhail and Shataka and Priscilla said, we're going to be transparent because that's Amen. the only way we know how to be, but that's the only way that we're all going to grow. And we really want to see you out, active, and enjoying life. We really do. So I love you guys. Thank you, my love sister. You love I will you see you Anna. soon. And um, say bye to everybody. <laughs> love you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. We it's the end of our conversation for today, but it's not the end forever. These are conversations that we have all the time. And like I said, they're important conversations. I hope that you walked away knowing that you matter, that you enjoying your life is important, that you don't have to apologize to anyone for enjoying life and living the life that you deserve to live. We are going to have resources that we'll be posting soon. So I'll keep you abreast of that so you won't miss it. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok, follow us on Facebook. If you've got friends that are not living life abundantly, share this video with them. Share our YouTube channel and let them know that we're just getting started, but the movement is in full effect. We're glad that you're here. Like and subscribe to this um, channel and know that we will be back with much, much more. We're heading to Jamaica next year. If you're interested, we've still got a place for you. Just reach out. We'll get our travel agent to, to speak with you personally, okay? We also have a, a, a drawing that you could win a trip for two. So make sure you check the links for that. We would love to have you. And if you're in the Atlanta area or want to be, our next event is August 13th. It's our annual all-white party. The last one was our luau. This one is a Western thing. We got a bull. Want to come ride the bull? Come on, join us. Look at the links, and we'll see you soon.